We know that Heldolf was stricken with a great deal of pain and hardship. It seems almost like some kind of curse. I can see that. Bound to the curse that is eternal loneliness. Hmm. During our most recent encounter with him, he taunted Saray, preying on his emotions and trying to bait him into becoming a fallen shepherd. But afterwards, he reached out to Saray and tried to convince him to join his ranks. The Lord of Calamity, reaching out to the Shepherd. I want to know, just what happened to Heldolf to make him the man we see today? But that would infringe on the old man's taboo. We don't even have a clue what that really means. Maybe this is selfish of us, but still. Is there no chance you can help? Follow me. Maven, are you sure about this? There's no point in stories if we lose the future in which to tell them. No taboo is worth that fate. Check it out! That huge thing has carvings all over it! Is this from the era of the gods? I've never seen anything like it before. Oh boy, more fodder for our resident nerds. <laughs> it looks like there's something nearby. To most people, this monument is nothing more than a lump of rock. However, the storyteller of time can harness its true capabilities. The storyteller of time? The one who passes stories to future generations. Stories of humans. Seraphim, Hellions, Shepherds, the Lord of Calamity. It is my clan to whom that fate has fallen. A storyteller is to be a dispassionate observer. He must not interfere in world events. But I am prepared to accept the consequences. Is that an earthen historia? There are more of them? The others were fine, but this one had to be shielded from the eyes of men. So I kept it for myself. Then this must be... Yes. This is a record of the dawn of chaos. Come. Experience the truth of the dawning of this age. Perceive the light. Perceive the darkness. Place your hands upon the monolith. Then, close your eyes. Poroshkus were kusaresko, werek furiek ohish kehem omem. Do not ponder the answer for now. Simply feel. Understand? What happened? Where is this? I've never seen this place before. We're experiencing the dawn of chaos. So I suppose this would be... Camlon, the Origin Village! Well, might as well go on. Undisagreed. Pretty big crowd here. No kidding. General, this is absurd. How long must we keep living like this? I am protecting you from the invasion by the forces of Highland. I'd expect you to be more grateful, Shepard. Huh? This guy's the previous Shepard? You have occupied our village for half a year now. This isn't protection, it's house arrest. Not to mention, the Kingdom of Highland is only acting against us because Roland's moved their army here in the first place. Looks like they can't hear us. The Earth in Historia shows that which has transpired. 
The strategic importance of this location cannot be overlooked just because the Shepherd founded a village here. You can trust Highland would say the same. What, so it was inevitable? When one considers the rise of the Highland Valkyries, yes. I've had enough. Just leave us. Michael! Are you really okay with this? Those bastards are treating Lord Maltellus' shrine as their own fortress! How much longer must they blaspheme the Seraphim? Brother! It's okay, Muse. He's right that Camelon happens to be a strategically crucial location, given that we're here along the northern border. An army that controls this territory can send troops to the enemy's capital at will. Their interest in our land is sad, but understandable. Do you really trust the words of that tyrant? They will do as they will. We must focus on what we believe in. As a lone shepherd, with no other family in the world to call his own, I vow to protect Muse and everyone else. I swear it. So the Origin Village was occupied by Heldolf. And then dragged into the chaos of war. Still, you can understand why neither army could leave it alone. Ugh. Is something wrong, Miklia? Huh? Oh, well... The humans were treating Maltellus with scorn and contempt. No wonder his blessing was lost. But there's probably more to the story. Let's head towards the shrine. Right. Could it be Rollins has noticed Michael led Lord Maltellus away from the capital? No. Much more likely it's just a feint to draw out the forces of the Northern Territory. They just want a pretext to declare war. This is absurd. Thoroughly absurd. But that's humans for ya. You said it. The more things change, the more they stay the same. According to what the Shepherd said, the Shrine is full of malevolence, and the village is beginning to lose its blessing. Oh no. Is Maltellus going to become a Hellion? Let us put faith in the Shepherd. He said he would never allow that, even should it cost him his life. But still, if the Shepherd would be lost anyway, wouldn't it be better for us just to evacuate while we can? There's no way that someone like Michael could ever do such a thing. Right. He's the Shepherd. He couldn't just abandon Maltellus and let him succumb to malevolence. Saray. If this podunk town can serve as the key to successful conquest of the Northern Territory, then I can suffer the ire of one measly shepherd. What is it? An enemy attack! The Northerners have arrived! No! It appears to be the Highland Army! I will not rise to their bait. Assemble the troops. We shall retreat. We will make no counterattack? Would you have me throw men away on some meaningless skirmish with Highland? Don't be an imbecile. Guess this town is destined for the scrap heap after all. Have the order to retreat given at once! Unbelievable! Doesn't he care about the happiness of the villagers? This trivial nonsense is what got the entire village wiped out? Duh. Stop it! Saray! Knowing we can't do anything to intervene just makes it worse. What on earth is Heldoff doing? Heldoff abandoned the village and fled. Filthy Roland scum! Sneak into the mountains, will you? <laughs> There's more over here! How could this happen? Shepard! Muse has gone to the shrine! What? To beg the Roland's army for assistance! But Heldolf's already run away! 
Muse, please be safe. Hurry to the shrine. Right. Wait, please. I understand that as a fellow shepherd, you feel strong empathy toward him. That is normal. But please, do not forget what Maven told us. <sighs> you too, Miklio. I'm sorry. It's just... We can already tell this isn't going to end well. We've learned more than enough here to put the pieces together at this point. But we still need to see this through, don't we? Let's go. Right. Miklio looks out of character, to say nothing of Saray. Well, of course. He was bound to notice before too long. Yeah. When you add in the fact that none of this is heading for a happy ending. We all picked up on it. Miklio, Muse, and the Shepherd all look too similar not to. Let's go. We're very close to the whole truth. He's alive. Oh, he's alive. But... Oh my god! Now tell us! All is lost. Now tell us has become a Hellion. And this... This innocent child! All due to the insipid ambitions of one man! Brother! Wait! This misfortune, I grant you eternal solitude! No! Heltoff, live now and forever in a hell of your own making. This is my answer. Stop! So, they anticipated our retreat. You are the Valkyries, I take it? Lightning? General! Heldolf, prepare yourself! What on earth?! So that's what went down. So Kitty Beard didn't become a Hellion. He was made one. One bearing the most terrible curse there could possibly be. And the one responsible for it was the previous Shepherd. So then, I... Is this the same village? If it's not over yet, then there must be more to it. It's not over, huh? Miklio. We gotta be close to the end. Shouldn't we just take a quick gander before we head back? <sighs> you look pretty bummed out by this. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry I'm not more bummed out myself, I mean. 
You don't need to apologize for that. Hmm. Whenever a friend of mine is down, if I'm not feeling the same way, I always feel like... Maybe something's missing from me. It's just like he said, Rose. There's nothing you need to apologize for. In fact, uh... Yeah. Sorry. Huh? If anything, we should be the ones sorry for making you worry so much. We just need a little more time to get our feelings sorted out. We'll be fine. You can count on it. Gotcha! My goodness! What happened? Such thick malevolence. I feel sick. Malevolence of this impossible magnitude can only mean one thing. Not now, tell us! Born far too early by the looks of it. Poor mother and child. Neither of you deserved this. Perhaps this, too, is fate. That child's human! Are we not all the same when we first breathe this air, save for the vessel we chance into? But a child born so premature won't last but a few months. Probably so. Zenrus! Muse! My goodness! What happened here? I'm afraid there's no time to explain. We have to seal off the malevolence before it drifts into Elysia. Who's that child? S Celine's? Could it be she. She was with child? In order to contain Mount Tellus within this land, you would be the sacrifice to seal the path to Elysia? But Mount Tellus is using the land itself as his vessel. Even if we can trap him here, it would be no more than empty consolation. I understand, but even so, this is something that we humans have brought upon ourselves. And the Shepherd? I take it that the Shepherd has finally fallen? That may be so, but fate has blessed us with a thread of hope. You don't mean to say you will raise these children to become the Shepherd and his sub-lord? For a human and a seraph child raised together, anything is possible. However, it all depends on these children. I humbly accept your two small beacons of hope. Gramps! Zenrus, I have not the words to thank you! Farewell, my dearest child. Leo! Oh. Oh. Gramps! So, Saray, you were a survivor from that village. And our boy Mickey was refashioned into a seraph. So I was a sacrifice. You can cry if you want. Why would I cry? I'm surprised, to be sure, but I'm not sad. And now we know where Mount Hellas is. Now the only thing left is our answer. Right. So does this mean we've found it? I know now what path I want to take. Though I'm not sure that counts as an answer. Very well then. Let's consult with Maven once more. Hey, where'd he go? Just a little while ago, he was activating the hidden powers of this monolith. He's probably still around here somewhere. You're right. Let's go look for him.
Come to think of it, I wonder how this monolith works. How do you think it activates the Earth in Historia? Probably because this is an Earth Pulse Nexus, don't you think? Earth Pulse? <laughs> I'll let Terror Firma herself do the explaining. The Earth Pulse is a manifestation of the power of Mother Nature that permeates the Earth. Exactly! Logren has been known for centuries as a spot where several branches of the Earth Pulse intersect. If you're already such an expert, why call on me? Because when you say it, it's that much more adorable. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. So, the Earth in Historia is reacting to the Earth Pulse. Um, could you repeat that in English for dumb bums like me? Well, um... Okay, let's say instead that there's all this water bubbling up here. Then the Earth in Historia would be like a water wheel. When the wheel goes round, it grinds out the record of history, just like it was milling grains. Oh, okay. Makes sense to me. But then why are the Earth and Historia behaving like a water wheel? Uh, probably... I told you. The Earth Pulse is the power of the Earth. Oh, I see. So if Maltellus made the Earth and Historia, and he's using the Earth itself as his vessel... Then probably it's the force of his will that's making them do that. turn of affairs. There was more to it than just Heldolf and the Shepherd Michael. So many factors converged to bring about that disaster. What happened to that village was so ghastly, you can sort of see how Michael finally came to do what he did. But still, no one except maybe his closest friends ought to buy I was in the depths of my despair as an excuse. Right. The actions he took that day changed the fates of millions. That's true. It was his thoughtless curse of eternal solitude that paved the way for Kittybeard to become the Lord of Calamity. Without the curse, Old Sourpuss never would have hated the world so much. Never would have wanted it to turn into a world of Hellions. You can't blame the people of Highlander Rollins for seeing him as a monster. But I get the sense that deep down, in his own misguided way, he just wants to bring peace to his country. Some of the blame, too, has to go to the former Shepherd for keeping secret the fact that he'd spirited Mautelis away. Because of that, folks who didn't know the true situation wound up desecrating the Shrine and causing Mautelis to transform into a Hellion. That's right. If they'd only talked about it more openly, there might have been better understanding and cooperation. It also looks like the former Shepherd didn't really trust anyone other than his own flesh and blood. To those who believed in the Shepherd, I can think of no greater wound. True enough. He may have genuinely wanted every one of them to be happy, but if he never shared this desire with anyone, then... Regardless of Michael's circumstances, it doesn't change the fact that what Heldelf did was unspeakably cruel. That he would toss strangers to the wolves just to further his own interests. None of this comes down to black and white, that's for sure. Well, Maven told us just to feel and experience what had happened. We'll go tell him what we felt. You're back. What are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to make sure the monolith doesn't get damaged. Your thoughts? No one involved was fully in the wrong, but no one was really right either. That's how it felt to me. A useful understanding to reach. Now, your answer. Saray, let us hear your answer to this. My answer? 
is I want to save Heldolf. The Shepherd's job doesn't just boil down to quell the Lord of Calamity, or even clean up the previous Shepherd's mistakes. When Malevolence consumes Seraphim and turns them into Hellions, we save them. Yet when it brings misfortune and grief to humans, we say they only have themselves to blame. It doesn't seem fair. So that is your answer. Dunno if it counts as one. There are humans out there just like Heldolf. He just happened to play one part in a cascade of terrible events. I'm not gonna say you shouldn't sympathize with him, but I will say it would strike me as bizarre to completely let him off the hook for the horrors he brought to such a peaceful village. And what he's trying to do now is still messed up, right? Absolutely. It's wrong, period, and I will stop it. But even so, you would save this man? If I won't save humans like Heldolf, who've had Hellionhood thrust upon them, I'll never see humans and Seraphim live in peace. I see. So then you... Really are an idiot. Yep. Saray is Saray, and we love him for it. That's right. He couldn't be anyone else even if he tried. So, Mr. Teller, that what you were looking for? For such a man, ending his loneliness would be the sole path to salvation. Do you understand what that means? Taking his life, I would expect. Saray, can you carry that burden with you? Indeed. That, even more than your answer, is the crucial matter. Right. What's important now is whether you truly will not waver. Or rather, whether you truly believe in your answer, and are willing to accept its repercussions. No matter what happens, and no matter what cost. Wait, are you asking him to prove his determination in battle? Put bluntly, yes. In order to defeat one who has been abandoned in time, the bonds of strength must be severed. Show me how that is done. Defeat the one who has been abandoned in time. You can't be talking about... How to sever the bonds of strength. So eternal loneliness is a curse, you say? It makes sense now. Old man. Now then, show me! Hey! Don't hold back! I certainly won't! But even if there is a way to sever the... Bonds of strength. And if we were to actually use it, then what would happen to you? Do you see why it is you waver? Settle this, Shepard! Do not let Maven's conviction go to waste. What 
I want to see is not a mere display of strength. So you really are immortal? You understand by now, don't you, the way to defeat me? Yes. Turn my friends into attacks with wills of their own, and use those attacks to pierce through the bonds of strength. What Dazzle said he did. Then why aren't you doing it? I'm not a Hellion. Even if you make use of that means, your friends will not be consumed with malevolence. <laughs> you won't admit it. After all, to demonstrate that method upon me is tacit acknowledgement that it is your only option withheld off as well. But Maven, isn't there any other way at all? No. Even Lila's power is not enough to purify one as consumed with malevolence as he is. You should know that. Saray. Rose. If you weigh lives on scales, you will falter at the crucial moment. All the more so if it is your friend's lives in question. But if you do waver, and your wavering leads you to a faulty answer, you may never recover. In this way does virtue become vice. <sighs> but if you will die for the answer you truly believe in, even failure will not stop you from rising again. What you should fear is not failure, but rather that fear itself will compromise your belief in your answer. Lila. Now then, Saray! If you intend to make this a farce, then I shall end it! Show me! Not just with words! But with the spirit of belief! I shall end it! The list saver! It is a damn shame, Lila. Unfortunately, it looks like they still don't understand. So, it was all for naught. No, just a little bit more. Even when they resented their own helplessness, even when they grieved for a fallen comrade, even when evil schemed to lead them astray, Saray and his companions have pushed ever on, never losing themselves. Knowing fear, but not malevolence, they came all this way to stand here together. You're really something. I don't like having regrets, and I don't like giving them to other people either. Don't you forget it. Saray, Rose, you paralyzed or something? Going up against Hellions is already life or death. It shouldn't be new to you. Edna, Savid. It's just as they said, Rose. Saray. Do you remember what I told you? Back at Lady Lake? I didn't come all this way just to be a liability. I said it before. Do I need to say it again? No. If the Shepherd Saray truly believes in his answer, then surely may he bring an end to the Age of Chaos. Then show us. Show us your answer. Saray! Everyone. You have good friends, lad. Darn right! Let's go! Come at me! Lord of Water! Don't just charge in there! Maven! This is... My answer! Old man! Maven? I thought I could hold out until you finished it, but... Maven? Oh, I'm so sorry it came to this. You're an idiot, too. You're... not wrong, but I have no regrets. What's going on? What are you saying? Come on! It's because I violated the taboo. If the user breaks the terms of the oath, the special powers granted by the Oath likewise vanish. You should have told us. Please. 
do not blame Lila. She merely did what she believed was right for all of you. And it was my decision to make as well. I believe too. In my answer. And in my friends. And for their sake, I will not waver in what must be done. So there will be no regrets. It is time to say our farewells. I promise. I'll never forget what you've told me, Maven. And I'll teach it to others as well. Saray, you've... <sighs> never did I imagine I would die with others by my side. Thank you. Let's go! To Camlon? Yeah. Maltellus should still be there. Let's make for Alicia first. There should be a road there leading to Camlon. We saw Gramps come running when the village fell. Oh, that makes sense. So Camlon was close to Elysia. Very likely. That fits with the idea that it was a strategically important location for Highland, Rollins, and the Northern Powers. Yeah, good point. But it looked to me like the road to Camlon was sealed off. Yeah, by my mother. You can cry if- I told you I'm not going to cry! Looks like this is the final battle. Let's end this. Right on! <laughs>